Welcome to the introduction to Sinatra Screencast. You may also be interested in our introduction to Hamill Screencast, as we will be using some Hamill in this video. You might be surprised to find out that if you search on Google for Sinatra, the first result is not Old Blue Eyes, but is instead a web application framework for rapidly building web applications in Ruby. Sinatra is a domain-specific language, or DSL. This means that it is designed from the ground up to build web applications with minimal effort. To install Sinatra, open a terminal window and type gem install Sinatra. You may need to use sudo for this. Create a new file called app.rb and type require Ruby gems on the first line and then require Sinatra on the next. Back in the console, run ruby app.rb and you'll see that a Webrick web server has spun up on port 4567. When we visit localhost port 4567, we see Sinatra telling us it doesn't know how to respond to this request. It also gives us some hello world code. Let's copy and paste this into our app.rb file. When we refresh the page, we still see the same message as before. That's because once your Sinatra app is running, it caches the code in memory. So we need to press Ctrl C in the terminal window to stop the Sinatra application. So now when we restart the server again and visit the URL in our browser, we see Hello World. Sinatra's core syntax deals with URL matching for HTTP methods get, post, put, and delete. A route is defined by matching an HTTP method with a URL pattern. Each route has an associated block of code that is executed when a request is matched. The code supplied by the Sinatra error page we saw a moment ago is a GET request matching the root path. It returns a string hello world that gets passed into the body of the response for browsers to render. In some cases, you may want to just output a string, but most likely you'll want to use templates and views. Let's say we're setting up a simple site with an index, about, and contact page. We'd set this up by creating three routes, slash for the index, slash about for the about page, and slash contact for the contact page. Sinatra allows you to use a wide variety of templating languages. We're going to use Hamel in this case, so let's require Hamel at the top, and then install it in the console by typing gem install Hamel. Then at the end of each block, you'll want to add Hamel followed by the name of your template. So for index, the line would be Hamel, colon index, and so forth. So where are the views and templates stored? There are two common ways to store them. The first way is to use inline templates. You'll find this commonly used in really simple, small apps. This is where you declare the end of your source code with underscore underscore end underscore underscore then two at symbols, followed by the name of your view, then the contents of your view. If we're going to have several views, it's best to use a layout for the surrounding markup. To do this, define a layout by adding two at symbols, followed by the word layout. All we need to do then is add any site-wide markup here and remove all the duplicate markup from the views. The yield line represents where each view file will be rendered within the layout. And here's how our example looks with the duplicate code removed. When we stop and restart our Sinatra application, we can now see that our pages are rendering fine. The second way to add views is to add a views folder. A views file name should be the same as the reference passed to Hamel with the .haml extension. If you're using a different templating language, the extension will of course be different. So since we're using Hamel, all of our files will end with .haml. So in our views folder, we have a layout.haml, index.haml, contact.haml, and about.haml. Each file contains the markup that would have been inline for that page in the previous example. So far, we've only created a fairly static site. What if we want to add variables? Let's say we want to create a different title for each page. To do this, we include an instance variable in each route block. 
Let's call it title and then set whatever we want as the title for that route block. We'll do this for each page. Once we've done that, we'll go to our layout file and reference our title variable there by including an equal sign before it. OK, so let's restart our app and visit the site in the browser. And as you can see, the different titles are included in the pages. Sinatra allows you to add named parameters in your routes. Let's create a string manipulator app that will manipulate a string in various ways depending on the URL. So let's require Sinatra at the top of our file. To include a parameter in our URL, we write a colon followed by the name we want to give it. In our case, we'll call it string. Let's create two routes. First, one to reverse a string. So, get slash reverse slash colon string. And second, one to uppercase a string. Get slash upcase slash colon string. In this example, the route patterns reverse and upcase could be named anything, we're just choosing something sensible. The same goes for the named parameter, string. You access the named parameter through a hash named params, just like in Rails. In our case, this will be params string. So now we call dot .reverse for the reverse route and dot .upcase for the upcase route. Now, let's start our application. Note we didn't require the Ruby gems at the top of our application. That's because you can pass in the dash Ruby gems argument to the Ruby command line interpreter to automatically include Ruby gems when running your software. So when we enter Ruby dash Ruby gems app.rb into an open console, the Sinatra app starts up. Now if we visit localhost port 4567 slash reverse slash world, we get the reversed string DLROW returned. And if we go to localhost port 4567 slash upcase slash world, we get the capitalized world string returned. We've only scratched the surface of what Sinatra has to offer, but we hope we've whet your appetite, and we encourage you to look over the example-rich readme on sinatrarb.com slash intro. Thanks for watching! Subscribe to our RSS feed, follow us on Twitter, and please leave any comments, questions, or suggestions for new screencasts in the comments below. If you like our videos and think your friends, followers, or colleagues would benefit from seeing them, please feel free to share via any of the links below the video. We really appreciate your support. See you next time!